Let me read the final two paragraphs of this Roger Scruton essay that is called Dying in Time. If I can find it on the site here. Here we go. Uh, you can show my screen if you want, Zach. I'm just going to be reading it um, as I scroll. I recommend the entire essay, and I'll link in the, in the video description, in the show notes. Courage, therefore, is the sine qua non of any attempt to deal with the threat of senility. Courage to face the truth and to live fully in the face of it. With courage, a person can go about living in another way, a way that will give maximum chance of dying with his faculties intact. This other way is not the way of the welfare culture in which we are all immersed. It does not involve the constant search for comfort or the obsessive pursuit of health. On the contrary, it is a way of benign shabbiness and self-neglect, of risky enjoyments and bold adventures. It involves constant exercise, but not of the body. Rather, exercise of the person through relationships with others, through sacrifice, through the search for opportunities to be involved and exposed. Such, at least, is my intuition. The life of benign shabbiness is not a life of excess. Of course, you should drink, smoke, eat fatty foods, but not to the point of gluttony. The purpose is to weaken the body while strengthening the mind. The risks you take should not damage your will or your relationships, but only your chances of survival. Officious doctors and health fascists will assail you, telling you to correct your diet, to take better forms of exercise, to drink more water and less wine. If you pursue a life of risk-taking and defiance, the thought police will track you down, and your lifestyle will be held up to ridicule and contempt. It is not that anyone intends you to live beyond your time. Rather, to use Adam Smith's famous image, the old people's gulag arises by an invisible hand from a false conception of human life, a conception that does not see death as a part of life and timely death as the fruit of it. Each of us must decide for himself what the life of benign shabbiness requires of him. Obviously, dangerous pursuits like hunting and mountaineering have a part to play. Equally important is the forthright expression of opinion, so as to, with grateful friends and implacable enemies, a process that enhances both the consolations of social life and the tensions of day-to-day -day living. I am not sure that I could live with my friend, no, I am not sure that I could live like my friend, the writer and campaigner Ayan Harsi Ali, but there is an adorable recklessness in her truth-directed way of life that makes each moment of it worthwhile. Going out to help others in ways that involve danger and the threat of disease is also a useful form of exposure. The main point, it seems to me, is to maintain a life of active risk and affection while helping the body along the path of decay, remembering always that the value of life does not consist in its length, but in its depth. I love this essay. I don't agree with all of it. I love reading things which strike me as um, getting to the heart of an issue in a way that I had not thought to, and uh, coming to conclusions, not all of which I agree with, either for uh, simply uh, differences in values to some slight degree, uh, but differences in perspective. Um, but being able to stand in Scruton's shoes and read this and think, I'm still going to advise our audience at the end of this show to eat good food. And I don't think of myself as a health fascist. And this is not about um, eating well so that you can live to the absolute uh, extension of your possible life, but to eat good food so that you can do more with the body and the life that you have. Yeah, it strikes me this resonates on a bunch of different levels, uh, various things that we talk about. This is the opposite of reductionism, mm -hmm. right? Now, I agree with you. There's some things in there that strike me as not, I wouldn't say they're not right, but I would say that they're not universal. And he's making an argument that makes them sound as if they are. Mm -hmm. But really the point is, look, the length of life is one factor in an equation of something that doesn't have a name that you should be maximizing. Right? right? And so the point is, yes, if you're living well, then living longer gives you more of that well living, which is good. Um, if you are living pointlessly, then lengthening it does very li little to increase the amount of whatever it is that you might do, let's call it meaning for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. uh, so the point is you should be monitoring that thing and you should be balancing how much do I want to just stick around on this planet as long as possible against how much do I want to have, you know, pushed the outside of the envelope before I go, you're right? How much would I have liked to have integrated into my model? How much would I have liked to have contributed to our understanding of ourselves or something like that? And so, you know, it isn't very easy to specify what it is we should be maximizing. But the point is we should be maximizing something synthetic, which does not, which is antithetical to trying to maximize length of life. That's right. 
and uh, and lots of lots of things are like this, you know. Um, you know, we, the even the approach to punishment, for example, if you're raising children or pets, right? You it, you can say, well, I don't I don't want to punish. Well, yeah, you shouldn't want to punish. But how do you punish so as to minimize the amount of punishment? It's going to involve punishing well, so mm-hmm. that you don't have to do it very often. Yeah. If if because you don't like the thing that needs to be done, you do it poorly, you increase the likelihood that you will have to do more of it in the future. And if you continue to do it poorly, you will create this positive feedback loop where you create more and more requirement that you do it. And the more poorly you do it, the more requirement there is for the thing. Right. Yeah. And we don't, you know, this, I think this also goes to what we talk about with respect to the importance of interacting with systems that are not socially defined mm-hmm. as you are educated or as you educate yourself, because those systems will will continue to tell you that if you try to maximize a single parameter, you'll accomplish nothing, right? Yeah. Whereas a, an authority figure might tell you, oh, that's wonderful. You've, you've accomplished so much. And mm-hmm. so if you want to learn these lessons, it might be that you have to step outside the, uh, the social in order to even see them, which we do less and less.